one of the great things is we look around our building and we realize we, we have enough square footage in this building to create space for children and, and youth. Uh, but right now, some of the spaces are used for other things like racquetball or just miscellaneous storage. And they're right next door sharing walls with some of the spaces that, uh, that we already use. Part of the plan that we have is to be able to take some walls and knock them down and build a, a floor in between. And what that does is it creates two large spaces on an area that used to be two racquetball courts, which provides space for the children to both have an identifiable, dedicated space and enough space for all of their kids to fit. So essentially, we're taking our square footage foot plan we already have, and we are making it significantly larger so that we can actually hold all the teens and youth that we have, teens and children. I challenge you on a Sunday to, to drive around the, the campus. You know, our vision is, is, is to minister to kids and to minister to youth, but if you drive and look at the building, the outside of our building says, we don't want kids, we don't want teens. Can you imagine a flower bed of, of, of great mulch and great bushes? What if this was turned into mulch around the playground system that kids can play on, that kids can have fun, facing a street that is our heaviest traffic flow? What a great symbol that we want kids and we want kids to have fun here. Uh, and, and so when kids come to have fun, we also get the opportunity to minister to and to present the gospel to. So if it was your first time coming to our church and you pulled up, you looked at our building, you'd realize there aren't really, really displayed and designated spaces for youth or children to go to. One of our visions is for this side of the building, not only would we redo the stairway that we just showed you, but we would create this entire area to be an area where teens can enter, feel welcome, they actually know where they're supposed to go, and maybe when their families down church, they know where they can find their teen at. And teens are very hands-on, and so this gives us the opportunity to have like a prayer wall where teens can put their prayers up and people can come up and pray for them and the teens can pray for each other, which we can't have right now because we can't leave anything in one area because then the children need something. And so it, it kind of gives us a chance that we can do those different things. They have some opportunities to do those types of things. We have some opportunities to not just decorate, but to make different spaces that are um, available for the teens to be able to share life together, share the faith together, and experience the goodness that God has for them by even having little stations that they can go to that helps them, I mean, even show their art of um, how God's given them talents, that they can show that kind of thing off. And, just a whole variety of things that we really can't do right now because we have pretty empty spaces because of the amount of time that it takes to decorate them and get them ready to go. So in the car the other day, Mom and I were talking about being a part of the Ford campaign. And Mom and I were talking about how it has been incredible to see volunteers step in and lead this. And it hasn't been staff driven. We've shared vision with you. We've shared direction with volunteers. But coming from the back seat of my car is a voice that says, Dad, I, I, I know why we're doing it. I, I know what the, what the purpose of the Ford campaign is. And he says, we need space because on a Sunday morning, sometimes we have how many kids on a Sunday morning? 60 up to 90. 60 up to 90 kids in a space that, that's overflowing. And he tells me this story of a neighbor friend. What's our neighbor friend's name? Owen. Owen. Who, who, Owen doesn't go to church, but the heart of my son understands the significance of his friends being here. But he also sees a space that can't contain some of the things that we're doing and the way we're ministering to kids. So we're counting on you to be a part of this story. We're counting on you to be a part of Owen's transformation. Not to mention, I don't want to discourage his heart from inviting his friends to church because it's not an environment that's inviting or it's not an environment that we can put another child into. So when you consider the fact of what, what your help and your pledge does for the formation of not only a campus and a space, but for the life of a child, the formation of their walk, own weight, Owen lives in a home with a mom and dad. What does it look like if Owen begins a story that transforms that family?